If in SQL Safe, IDARA's Enterprise SQL Server Backup and Recovery Solution, there are two ways that you can quickly restore a database to an instance. The first being Instant Restore, and the second being creating a virtual database. We'll go over uh, Instant Restore first. All right, so Instant Restore is used to allow instant access to a database while the rest of the database data is being restored in the background. And to do that, um, in, within the SQL Safe console, uh, you have to uh, actually enable SQL Safe Instant Restore. And what this does is it installs a, uh, a SQL Server service, uh, a SQL Safe filter driver here. And I actually have that in my Windows service. And this is what helps uh, to populate those data pages once the uh, catalogs are initially uh, restored here. So let's go ahead and start a, an Instant Restore here. Just right click on your instance. Click Restore Database. All right, I'll just uh, you know instantly restore database uh, to uh, this database, my WinDC 2012. We're not going to restore all databases. I have a specific backup file uh, that I'm going to uh, use for a restore. All right. Now you can do a point in time restore. Now these require that um, maps are generated with your safe backups here, and I'll show you that um, uh, you know that option and how restore works here. And so we have our backup uh, file here. Uh, this is the point in time area. We're just uh, uh, you know, restoring a full backup. One thing I will mention here is to check enable network resiliency, especially if you're uh, restoring off of a, uh, uh, you know, a, a server that's uh, going across the, the network, whether it's wired area or just local network. Also, um, in the case of an IO blip, network resiliency will guarantee that uh, you can retry after a certain number of seconds and you can fail after retrying for about five minutes here. Okay, so, um, and just to, uh, you know, so that restore operation doesn't continue running here, but uh, it will pick up at the same point of failure. So, uh, very important to enable network resiliency. All right, your database files, you can set your database name. I'm going to change this database name a little bit here just to signify it is an instant restore database. And you can see that the data and log file names have changed as well. The locations look fine to me. Your recovery state, leave is fully accessible. Now here's where you can do a normal SQL Safe Restore where it um, you know, just does a normal restore like it usually would uh, natively. Uh, however, I'm going to choose SQL Safe Instant Restore. And you have a link here, how does Instant Restore work? So before you start doing an Instant Restore, it is uh, important to understand how it works here. All right, so I'm not going to read through this page. I'm just going to summarize it. So essentially, uh, you um, what's required is that you have SQL Safe backups with backup metadata, or what we call maps. This can be set at the at the global setting tools uh, console uh, options, uh, or you can set this at the individual backup level level. So that's very important. All right, and um, also. Uh, we, we can't uh, do an uh, instant restore for file-based uh, restores, but we can do point-in-time restores uh, uh, up through the transaction log. All right, and we have our different statuses of our instant restores here. So, uh, you know, we initially bring the database online, populate the catalogs and, and, and tables and, every, and all, the, all the objects there, and then we start to hydrate the data. So in the case you have a very large database, a terabyte or more, um, we start uh, that... Um, uh, SQL Server uh, uh, restaurant or uh, uh, driver service will uh, populate that data in the background until it completes. All right, and in the meantime, queries typically run while it's hydrating uh, about 20% slower. Um, if you're running a, a big monster query, a lot of joins, a lot of outer joins for, you know, on very large tables, uh, but that goes away once um, and you'll have normal performance as you would uh, with a regular database once all the data pages are populated. All right, so let's go ahead and go back and complete our operation here. All right, you can set notifications if it fails, succeeds, or anything in between. Uh, I'm just going to leave this blank. And then now we have our summary. We can review this. We can also generate a script if we want to script this out into maybe a job or integration services package as part of a, a larger kind of uh, uh, ETL process or refresh process. All right, I'm just going to click Restore here. And what you're going to see here is um, uh, it's uh, the database is now online and now it's starting to hydrate here. Okay, so I'm going to go into Management Studio. 
refresh everything, go into databases. Here's my IR uh, SQL profile trace database. Expanding out the tables. And I'm just going to select the top 1,000 out of this first table here. So you can see it's still hydrating here. It's about 50% through. And I can query as many of these tables as I want. All right. I can also apply DML statements as well. And those, um, you know, so once this restore populates, it um, behaves just like any normal database abiding by the asset concept of uh, transactional uh, support. All right. So now we're uh, done here. And um, so very quickly, we restored a, what, how large is this database? Oh, I think it's about 10, 12 gigs, something like that. Yeah, so about 10 gigs, not very large in the grand scheme of things um, in my demo environment, but, uh, you know, I've heard of customers um, instantly restoring multiple terabyte databases in less than, you know, about 10 to 15, in 10 to 15 minutes. So that's pretty impressive. Okay, so another way uh, to... Um, uh, you know, restore a, a database backup very quickly is to create what's called a virtual database. So this functionality is only available within the web dashboard. All right, so the web dashboard uh, or our DARE dashboard really acts as a um, kind of a uh, uh, federation of all of the SQL Server solutions here. So you have, you see all the different solutions I have here. You would select SQL Safe and navigate to virtual database. Now, again, you can do a point in time restore by attaching multiple backups. I'm just going to keep this simple for this demonstration here. You select the host name here. I'll select my WinDC 2012 again. All right, you can select your backup file. Um, I have a pretty simple setup here, just uh, one C drive to C backup. And then my virtual database directory. All right, and I'm giving it uh, a name here, DMVDB, just so I know what it is. And I can create that virtual database. Okay, so what we're doing here is we're essentially attaching this backup file to the instance while not taking up the normal amount of space that that backup would, would normally take. All right, so again, if I refresh my WinDC instance here, you can see I have my DMVDB database. You can see all the tables and uh, you know, views that it has here, pro, uh, programmable objects, it has lots of store procedures and whatnot. You can execute those against this database and you can run any SQL statement that you, you normally would. Now, the difference here being is once you detach this uh, virtual database uh, from your instance, your transactions are going to be lost because you're essentially uh, running queries against a uh, backup uh, file. Okay, and you can query this database just like you normally would. Uh, virtual databases are usually used for, um, you know, getting a quick production uh, a backup available to reporting analysts, people, developers that maybe just need to run quick tests. Uh, so uh, very easily, very quick to, to do that. Now, if I bring up the properties of uh, my DM uh, virtual database here, uh, I can see that the total size is about a little over 1.1 gigs here. If I go to individual files. I can see that the data file is about 996 megs, 165 megs for the log file here. If I navigate to C backup when DC, I'll see that the actual size on disk of not only my log and data files, it's much shorter. So if you look on size on disk, three megs uh, for the log file as opposed to 165 megs, and then 5.25 megs as opposed to almost a gig for the data file. So uh, like I said, you're just attaching a, a virtual uh, a, a backup file uh, to uh, your SQL Server instance. So it comes in handy for uh, data analysts need a quick uh, production refresh to uh, run reporting uh, reports off of, do some testing, things like that. All right. And please go to idera.com, navigate to the SQL Safe Backup uh, homepage to download and start for free a fully functional 14-day trial. Thank you and have a great day.